This problem walkthrough video will demonstrate how to crash a project after drawing the network diagram and determining the critical path. Here's the data for our problem. Environmental Recycling Inc. ERI, must clean up a large automobile tire dump under a state environmental cleanup contract. Suppose that some of the activities in the ERI project can be crashed. The included table shows the crash times and costs associated with performing the activities at their original normal times and also for the crash times. All times are in weeks. There are four requirements for this problem. A, draw the correct PERT CPM network diagram for the project. B, identify the critical path. C, determine the total project completion time. And D, determine the lowest cost solution if the state wants to complete the project three weeks early. Let's start with requirement A and draw an activity on node, AON, network diagram. From the table provided, activities A and D have no predecessors and are therefore starting points for their respective paths. Activities B and C come right after activity A. Activity E can start after activities B, C, and D are complete. Activities F and G can begin after activity D is complete. Activity H can begin only after activity E is complete. And the last activity I can begin after activities F, G, and H are complete. This is now our completed diagram. There are many different ways you could draw a network diagram, so if yours looks a little different, that's fine. Next, we want to determine what the critical path is for requirement B. And the easiest way to do that is to simply map all the activities through the network and add up their task times. Our first path through the network is A, B, E, H, I, with task times of 3, 6, 8, 4, and 2 weeks respectively, adding up to a total path time of 23 weeks. Our second path is A, C, E, H, I, with task times of 3, 8, 8, 4, and 2 weeks respectively, summing up to a total path time of 25 weeks. A third path through the network is D, E, H, I, with task times of 6, 8, 4 and 2 weeks respectively, for a total of 20 weeks. A fourth path is DFI, with times of 6, 3 and 2 weeks, for a total of 11 weeks. And the last path through the network is DGI, with times of 6, 5 and 2 weeks, for a total of 13 weeks. Thus, we have 5 paths through the network, with times ranging from 11 weeks to 23 weeks. The critical path is the path that takes the longest and that is A, C, E, H, I at 25 weeks, and that satisfies our requirements B and C. You can determine your sequence of paths any way you like, but you'll still end up with the same five paths through the network. Now comes the fun part as we take on activity D to crash the project by three weeks to 22 weeks, since we know now that our project completion time is 25 weeks. The first step is to determine the maximum crash time for each activity, which is calculated by subtracting the crash time from the normal time. The crash times listed here represent the shortest possible time an activity can be completed. So for activity A, our normal time is three weeks, and it can be crashed down to a minimum of two weeks, making our maximum crash time one week. For activity B, the maximum crash time is also one week, calculated as six weeks normal time less five week crash time. Activity C has a maximum crash time of two weeks calculated as the eight week normal time minus the six week crash time. The crash times for all the remaining activities are calculated the same way. Based on our data, all the remaining activities D through I have a maximum crash time of one week except for activity H, which can be crashed by two weeks. The next step is to determine the crash cost per week which is determined by taking the crash cost less the normal cost and dividing by the maximum crash time. The normal cost is the total cost to complete the activity in the normal time, and the crash cost is the total cost to complete the activity in the shorter time. Note, this is not the incremental cost to crash the activity, but rather the total cost to complete it in the reduced time. For activity A, it will cost $400 to complete the activity in three weeks, or $750 to complete the activity in two weeks. That's a difference of $350, and we divide that by the number of weeks the activity can be crashed, which in this case is one week. Thus, the crash cost per week for activity A is $350. 
Activity B has a crash cost per week of $200, calculated as $2,100 crash cost, less than $1,900 normal cost, divided by the one week maximum crash time. Activity C has a crash cost of $300 per week, calculated as the $1,480 crash cost, minus the $880 normal cost, divided by the two week maximum crash time. The same approach is used to determine the crash cost per week for the remaining tasks, and you should end up with $400 for activity D, $250 for activity E, $200 for F, $150 for G, $200 for activity H, and $150 for activity I. Now that we know by how many weeks each activity can be crashed and at what cost, we can proceed with figuring out the optimal plan to get to 22 weeks at the lowest cost. I like to set up a table when crashing so it's easy for me to see all the activities, times, paths, and costs. Here's each activity with their normal times included above. Next, I've included the crash cost per week and the maximum crash times we just calculated. Next, I'm listing all the paths with their respective completion times. Path 1 is A, B, E, H, I and takes 23 weeks to complete. Path 2 is A, C, E, H, I at 25 weeks. Path 3 is DEHI at 20 weeks. Path 4 is DFI at 11 weeks. And Path 5 is DGI at 13 weeks. I'm also identifying Path 2 as a critical path by putting a red box around it. Now comes the critical thinking part. When crashing, you must first crash activities on the critical path. Otherwise, you'd be wasting your money crashing activities that aren't on the critical path because the project would still take 25 weeks to complete. So looking at our critical path, we can crash any of those activities, but where do we start? Well, we want to start with the least expensive crash cost per week, which happens to be activity I at $150. All other activities on the critical path will cost more than $150. So for our first, what I call wave of crashing, is to crash activity I by one week at a cost of $150 for a total cost of $150. We then subtract one week from each path that contains activity I. In this case, includes all of them. So I'll take one week off every path, making path 1 22 weeks, path 2 24 weeks, path 3 20, path 4 10 weeks, and path 5 12 weeks. The other thing to note here is that we have now crashed activity I by its maximum crash time of one week. So we need some way to remind ourselves that in future waves, we can't crash activity I anymore. And that's why I've shaded it gray and changed the maximum crash time to zero. Now we need to keep going if we want to reach 22 weeks. We still look at the critical path first and see activities A, C, E, and H to pick from. Activity A will cost $350 to crash by one week. C, $300, E, $250, and H, $200. H is the least expensive, so let's crash that activity. We can crash activity H by up to two weeks and use all of that time up as long as we're mindful of the impact on other paths, since other paths may become critical. So for our second wave, we will crash activity H by two weeks at a cost of $200 per week for a total cost of $400. We subtract two weeks off each path that contains activity H, which are paths 1, 2, and 3, making path 1 20 weeks, path 2 22 weeks, and path 3 18 weeks. We can't reduce the time on paths 4 and 5 since they don't include activity H. H can also no longer be crashed, so I've grayed out that column as well. The critical path remains A, C, E, H, I, which is now 22 weeks, and we've completed our objective of getting the project down to 22 weeks at a total cost of $550 in two waves by crashing I by one week and H by two weeks. Now you can stop here, or if you want a bonus challenge, let's see how far we can crash the project until we can't crash it anymore. We continue our same approach and start with a critical path which is still ACEHI. But now we have only three activities to choose from, A, C, and D. The least expensive is E at $250, so for our third wave we will crash activity E by one week at a cost of $250 per week for a total cost of $250. We then subtract one week from each path containing activity E, which are paths one, two, and three, making their times 19 weeks, 21 weeks, and 17 weeks respectively. 
we can no longer crash activity E, so that's grayed out, and path 2 is still critical because it still takes the longest time to complete. To keep going, we look at the critical path again and choose between A and C. We can crash activity A by one week at a cost of $350, or C by two weeks at a cost of $300 per week. C is the least expensive, we can crash it by two weeks, so let's do that and subtract two off each path that contains activity C, which happens to be only path two. This brings path two down to 19 weeks, and activity C can no longer be crashed, so that column is grayed out now as well. But something interesting has happened here. Notice now that we have two critical paths, path one and path two, both at 19 weeks. We could have crashed activity A by one week instead, and path two would remain critical, but our objective is to go as low as we can and want to knock off as many weeks as we can during each crashing wave. Now we have to adjust our thinking, and to continue crashing, we must be careful to reduce time on both critical paths at the same time by either crashing multiple activities on each path or a single activity that is on both paths. For path one, we can either crash activities A or B, and on path two, we can only crash activity A because that's all we have left on that path. Now activity B is the least expensive activity to crash at $200, but the problem is that it will only reduce the time on path one, and we need to balance both paths one and two. So we have no choice but to crash activity A by one week at a cost of $350 per week for a total of $350. We subtract one week from each path that contains activity A, which now makes paths one and two 18 weeks and still both critical. Can we continue? Well, let's look at this very closely. We could crash activity B by one week, but that would only reduce the time on path one by one week to 17 weeks, but path two would still be critical, so we'd be wasting our money because the project would still take 18 weeks. As for paths three, four, and five, they're all still below 18 weeks, so crashing activities there will not reduce the total project time at this point, and making further investments to crash activities would be futile. Therefore, the project can be crashed by a maximum of seven weeks to 18 weeks at a total cost of $1,750, and both paths A, C, E, H, I, and A, B, E, H, I remain critical.